Hey everybody, we're back. And I wanted to show you guys a little bit more about what's going on with our adult colubrids. So, um, I showed you guys a couple of weeks ago the snakes that are in brumation. Um, brumation is the term used for hibernation in cold-blooded animals. And um, when I showed you guys those, um, like I said, there are I think 167 in the brumation room, which is at the other end of the house, where it's nice and cool. They're down at 50-ish degrees, 50 to 60 degrees. And these guys behind me here are all still nice and warm with their hot spots and everything still on. And uh, they're adding a little bit more size before they go down for the season. So the reasons for there being snakes awake right now are number one, uh, they're just not big enough to breed uh, and I'm just raising them up. They'll be up all winter long. Number two is that they just aren't up to size um, or they weren't up to size when I put the other snakes down, but I do think I can get a couple more meals in them and they'll be big enough to breed by the end of the month or maybe mid-January, something like that. And the third reason is that they laid a clutch later um, in the 2020 breeding season and I don't think that they've gained all of their um, weight back, their pre-pregnancy weight, if you want to call it that. Um, and I want them to have a few more meals and bulk up um, so that they can breed again this coming 2021 season. So those are the three reasons. Um, I can show you guys a few examples of that. But uh, anyway, uh, I had a late breeding season. I, I mentioned that in the brumation video that I did. Um, this year, I, uh, I didn't get the snakes out of brumation, I think, until mid-March or maybe almost April, something like that. It was really late. So uh, because of that, you know, I'm breeding in March, April, May. Uh, I don't get clutches until June, July, and then I don't get um, babies on the ground until August, September. Um, and so a lot of these females still needed some recuperation and uh, they're doing great. They're getting ready to go down um, here in two weeks or so. A lot of them are ready to go down now. Um, so let's check out one of those females uh, that wasn't up to size and is about ready to brumate now that she's had a couple more meals. All right, and one example of one of those females that wasn't big enough or uh, either either wasn't big enough or laid eggs too late to go into brumation with the rest of the snakes three weeks ago, um, which means they stopped feeding over a month ago, um, is this palmetto corn snake female down here. I'll just show her to you while I'm talking. Um, I already fed her, actually, I fed her first. So she has a little meal in her. But uh, this little girl, um, I did not feel was big enough um, to breed at the beginning of the breeding season, which was, you know, May or June. Um, so I didn't put any males with her until it was like June, July, something like that. So um, she laid her little clutch in uh, actually August 30th. So if you think about that, um, basically September. So she only had the month of September, October, November, and December just barely started. So three months of eating. Um, and when she was already a little bit small to breed anyway, I think it's really important to get that extra size on her so that she can be a viable breeder for many years. It's really important not to over um, overbreed your females. Um, don't uh, just, just don't stress them too much with that type of thing. You can give females years off. That's always a good idea. Um, you know, depending on how she looks out of brumation, I may even give her a year off. And uh, sometimes that's the price you pay um, when you push a female to breed a little bit early. But anyway, uh, that's one example of uh, the three kind of reasons that I've still got some adult um, colubrids that are awake right now, if you want to call it that. So uh, anyway, let's check out some others. Alrighty, so the first snake that I wanted to show you guys is, is this nice little western hognose. This is from a guy named Larry Sasich. He's no longer in the hobby, but he was here in Idaho. And a really good friend of mine, Kenny Long, um, who actually helps me look after the snakes sometimes, um, raised this girl up from a baby, and uh, he allowed me to purchase her this year. So she was a little bit on the small side. <clears throat> I did breed her. Um, she laid seven eggs let's see yeah i think actually i'm looking right now six eggs on the first clutch seven eggs on the second and uh i don't think any of them hatched so anyway um she looks like she's a great body weight right now Ooh. you know she's not thin or anything like that but uh 
I, I just feel like if she is to breed this year, ooh, a little feisty one, are you? Um, then she needs a little bit more weight and or size on her. So, uh, you know, if she doesn't get there, then she can breed in 2022 or whatever she wants to do. So anyway, that's the first one. Really, really nice. Um, actually could be a head albino. Um, Larry had a whole bunch of albino floating around um, in his collection. This is that palmetto. I did not do a very good job of showing her uh, as I was on like selfie mode, you know what I'm saying? So check her out. Trying to remember. Marvin Folks in New England is who I got this from. a little longer. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, might be the nicest Applegate Pyro you'll see. She's ridiculous. Anyway, look at that. Christmas lights, candy cane snake. Makes a lot of sense, right? Oh man, look at her. Look at her. Like, it's like she's not even real. Those white bands are exactly as white as the red. That white skull cap. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, I was just trying to put a little more weight on her before she goes down. She's good to go. <clears throat> this is great news, guys. I bred tricolored hognose snakes for several years. I, I brought in a female from Europe myself. This is like my little holdback male, and I was actually going for really high black. And you can definitely see that's evident in him. Yep, I knew she'd be right here. And here's his little girlfriend. Also high black. Look at this face. Just almost a pure black face on her. So cool. Anyway, tricolor hognose snakes. They are now big enough to breed, so I just barely introduced them for that purpose. Let's see, nobody else in there of note. You guys are gonna laugh, but check it out. Classic corn snake. This is actually the only normal corn snake I have in my collection, but she's not quite normal, is she? Look at that zigzag pattern. She came from my original female corn snake. It was an annery that I actually bought on Craigslist in 2012. And mom had an aberrant zipper pattern like this too, not to this extent. But I decided to hold some babies back. This was one of them. Born in 2015, you'll see. And uh, anyway. Mom's not around anymore, but this girl lives on, and uh, she usually breeds to her brother, who's an Amel Motley, and they make some really, really nice babies. Okay, guys, we're about to post the babies from this here pairing. Oh. I missed a little poo. Oh. 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 This girl is <laughs> legit mean. Like... There are snakes that are, you know, just defensive. No, she's, she's mean. Um, Azanthic hognose, het sable. Let me grab my sable male. Where is he? Where is he? Oh, look at that. Mm, sable. The darkest hognose gene. Oh, he's ready to eat too. Look at that. Anyway, guys, we got sables, head azanthic, double head sunburst, or not sunburst, sorry, um, storm cloud, which is sable and azanthic. And uh, so she's an azanthic 66% head sable, which obviously I proved out she is a head sable. And he is. A sable that is 66% het azanthic. Watch this. Ooh. 
This is a really unique looking river road locale from Keith Carlson. Anybody who's real legit in the Grey Band of King Snake game knows who that is. And I bought a pair of these guys that are these Blair's face because I thought it was really unique. That's not a, a look that's real prominent in the River Road locale. So anyway, I actually produced some sick Blair's River Roads this year. So let's see if I can improve this lighting somehow. I don't know, but check that out. I love those little V-shaped bands, little diamond shaped bands. Okay, mama, time for you to go. I'm actually feeding them tonight, so. I may throw a couple clips in there if you guys are really nice. This right here is an amel or albino sun-kissed corn snake. I bred him to this girl, a ghost to Sarah. I literally cleaned every last cage, did their waters like an hour ago. Anyway, I produced this girl. Um, what? 2016 and uh, I bred these guys together got some cool um, het stuff some tesseras anyway look at just look at how good Amel Sunkist ends up as babies they really don't look like much the white on that thing I can't focus and hold it at the same time don't escape me anyway <laughs> nice little pair. They, they're super ready to eat, obviously. This right here is the closest thing to a white Leonis that I've got. Rod McLeod from Highland Herps produced this really, really nice female in 2000. Let's just look. 16. 2016 was a busy year, people, I guess. Um, she produced the first white MSP that I've ever gotten, Milk Snake Phase. Look at my Instagram, you'll see that. Um, and then a couple other real nice babies, but I'm hoping that she's gonna give me some legitimately white babies here in the future. Here's another pair of corn snakes. Let's see if they've had their way with their enclosure yet. So this right here is an Anary Sunkist. And he honestly is one of my very favorite looking snakes in the collection. He just looks crazy, doesn't he? Almost like a yellow and lavender hue together. He's incredible. He's so cool. And this girl right here is a snow sunkissed. The sunkissed gene just does so much. And uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's slept on by any means. People definitely know what it does, what it's about, and it's not hard to find. Oops, sorry. But um, I don't know. I'm surprised you don't see more of it with how, how like amazing it makes things look. Look at that. We have both Snow Sunkists and Annery Sunkists. And actually we produced our first ghost Sunkiss this year. These are all going up on Morph Market here very soon. This right here is a very, very nice gray banded king snake from Andrzej Kapinski. I think he is in, and then maybe not the Ukraine. I don't know. Uh, Eastern Bloc, Europe. OC Serpents, I think is his name. Andrzej Kapinski. Right there, that's how you spell it. 2016, once again. And I mean, that's not surprising. Some of these are not breeders from this year. They're, they're snakes that I'm trying to get up to size 
to breed in 2021 at five years old, which is, oops, I don't know what I'm doing, which is unsurprising, you know, a lot of these snakes really do need five years to get to where they need to be. This girl's been busy in here in the last hour. Um, a lot of you guys may or may not know, I've been breeding Durango Mountain King snakes for this really cool, um, like, high black look, basically muting all the red and then having these saddles that are entirely black, like so. This girl's a good example. Um, she bred this year. She was a good little girl. I think she actually, yeah, she double clutched. Actually, she was the second Greer I ever had to double clutch. I'll show you the first one I ever had double clutch. Um, like, not just this season, ever. Um, I had two of them do it. This was the first season I actually tried to double clutch any of my Durango Mountain King snakes, but anyway, that's a triple hit super hypo. You guys want to see the Mullendorfs? Oh, she knocked over her water. Cool. Wish me luck, guys. Wish me luck. Oh, this girl is beautiful. And cantankerous. But look at that turquoise green and that orange tail. Woo! What is going on right now? She's letting me touch her. Oh, this is weird. Just kidding, she'll kill me. But look at that. Crazy, huh? Okay, all right, all right, we're done. All right, let's look to the next rack here. This, this snake isn't all that much to look at necessarily, but genetically, it's a lot to behold. Sorry, girl. Double het, albino and Applegate, Arizona Mountain King Snake. I'm gonna move things along. This is a, another snake from Andre Kapinski. This is the male, I think. Yeah, the male, Het Annery, Great Band and King Snake. To go with the female I just showed you guys a minute ago. A lot of you guys might not know, but I've actually got the BHB line of Mex Mex that has this crazy striping. Look at that, and so it's like a granite, but it's also got the stripe. Sorry. Damn, right? Sick. Sick, sick, I love those. The male's already in donation, he's ready to go. Oh, this is a little, Bamboo rat snake. This is a Valentine. This is the Oreocryptophus porphyraceus Valentine, which is one of the other, one of the four bamboo rat snake species. We have all four, and uh, we're raising up a trio. This one's about to go into shed, so it doesn't look all that great, but I just wanted to show you guys. Ready to eat, just like the rest of them. Go on. Go on. And let's see. Yeah. This is a beautiful light phase Durango Mountain King Snake from Tyler Kennedy. The Mexicana King Snake Cartel. This snake is so ready to eat, I'm not gonna mess with her too much because she'll eat me if you're not careful. I've got another snake that wants to just go ham on anybody who comes near it. This is a Cherry County Pale Milk Snake from Nebraska. Jeff Hardwick line. Not gonna mess with her too much. We're already at 15 minutes. Oh, see that? Okay, maybe I will mess with her a little bit. 
During the breeding season, she was fine. But, nope, not anymore. This is another Durango Mountain King Snake, one of the bigger ones you're gonna see. This is a reduced black, not a light phase like the one you just saw a minute ago. Straight from Germany. This, right here. Here is an annery, a visual annery, gray banded king snake. I'm gonna pour her out because you know what? She's not gonna care. When I feed her in a minute, she's gonna eat anyway. I'm trying to breed more orange into these guys. The black gap locale, which is what this is, don't have a lot of orange in them classically. This is the vivid line of West Langtree Gray Band of King Snakes. Sorry. Hard to find nicer Blair's alternative than this. Okay. Let's move on. This is that other Durango Mountain King Snake that I told you guys. Double clutch for me this season. Really, really nice, light female. She did awesome. She's a really nice sized during the Mountain King Snake. Very, very healthy. She's ready to go into hibernation, AKA brumation any moment. Let's get the rhino rats out. Oh, slurps back in there. This little rhino rat was uh, kind of back and forth all season about wanting to eat, um, and then he would only want live, and then he would only want frozen thawed, and anyway, so he wasn't real robust when I put the other snakes in hibernation, so I kept them up, and he's doing great, eating like crazy now. Here's a species that I'm sure most of you haven't even seen, much less know that I keep the Mexican night snake. Pupils, just not even the pupils, the eyes. The eyes on these guys. Nothing like the desert night snake, I'll tell you that. Super cool. Same thing for him. He just needs to beef up a little bit. This is the broad banded um, bamboo, broad banded mountain bamboo rat snake, right? Yeah. Oreo cryptophus latacinctus. Uh, yeah, Oreo cryptophus porphyraceus latacinctus. Um, she just laid a clutch for us really recently. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Just go back in. Just go back in. Um, so, she obviously needs to gain a little bit of weight. Although the snake is in shed, I just wanted to show it because... Man, hypo. Hypo is so cool. And everything. This is a hypo melanistic Arizona Mountain King Snake. This is actually the BHB line. Like I said, in shed. I'm gonna give her a couple more meals. She'll be ready to roll. Let's see what the apple mel's doing. Did he shed yet? Oh he did. Perfect. This is the world's first albino. And Applegate, Arizona Mountain King Snake, and he's also got Paradox um, pigmentation to him. Talk about candy cane snakes. Pretty easy, right? See, when the Paradox picks up again. Right there. And there, and then it really gets thick near the tail. So cool. Just shed literally in a, like the last half hour. And that head stamp, can we just talk about that for a second? Incredible. These guys are all gonna be ready to go. Okay, and last but not least, everybody's been asking, where's that striped pyro? I have these little, 
things in there just to make sure she can't get out. She's not the biggest pyro. Come where everyone can see you. She did a little bit of business in her cage. So, there she is, guys. She's gonna get a couple more meals. So, aberrant at the top, striped on the back end. Sorry, I don't know why it's not in focus. That's why they call it a striped pyro, people. Anyway, obviously we're really hoping to reproduce this. The male below her is a is what's called a het striped. I don't know for 100% certain that this is verifiable as a uh, recessive gene. But you know what? Prismatic reptiles is gonna find out. And this right here is actually a really interesting one. This is a double het sense hypo and hypo e. Arizona Mountain King Snake. So the hypo, like I just showed you, the BHB hypo. Imagine that with this little guy, this little peach colored hypo erythristic Arizona Mountain King Snake. So imagine this peach snake with that like brownish purple hue for the black bands instead of this solid black. It's gonna be incredible. It's gonna be incredible. It's not for a little female hypo e. Right here we've got a female double head. I'm trying to raise her up this, sorry. There we go. This year um, to see if she'll breed in the spring. And I've got a double head male right below that. So anyway, that's all I've got to show you guys. Um, these, these guys are all gonna just get cooled down here in the next couple of weeks and the 2021 breeding season will be impending. So stay tuned for that guys.